Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Dana Perez and I'm a travel blogger based in New York City. And today's video is gonna go over all of the Cancun travel tips that I thought about when I was in Cancun and I just thought of so many different things that would be helpful, including how to get to your hotel, the differences between an all-inclusive or non-all-inclusive resort as I stayed in both, leaving the resort, all of those questions gonna be in this video, so let's get into it. I recently visited Cancun and I have some travel vlogs. If you want to check out my vlogs of the resorts that I stayed at, but I stayed at a variety of resorts ranging from super luxe to budget-friendly Blanc, Sun Palace, which were both all-inclusive, and then I stayed at the Marriott and the JW Marriott, which those are not all-inclusive. So I'll get into the details of like the pros and cons of visiting an all-inclusive or non-all-inclusive because it kind of changes your experience visiting Cancun. But first I want to talk about getting into Cancun. So unlike other countries, there are no travel restrictions to visit Cancun. You do not need to get a COVID test before. You can just show up from the US and enter the country. Obviously, be sure to bring your US passport. You need a passport to visit Cancun. I arrived on two separate days. Um, my first trip, I arrived on a Sunday, and the next trip, I arrived on a Tuesday. And the custom line for both of those days were completely different. The first time that we arrived, we arrived on a Sunday, and the line to go to customs, so after your flight, you walk down this long hallway, you go down an escalator and you arrive into customs where you get your passport stamped and head on to Cancun. On Sunday, it was literally so packed. Each line, there's like four different lines. You can pick any line. If you're not a Mexican citizen, they're not any different. When I arrived, I was kind of confused, like if I should go in line one, two, three, or four. They're all the same, so just pick the shortest line. And they were completely packed, like snaked all the way out. And then there was a line continuing out from the regular line. So it was pretty crazy. I was thinking in my head, this is gonna take like an hour. Thankfully, it went by super quick. Within like 25 minutes, we were done with the line. And what I did notice is I on the airplane, they will give you a form that you have to fill out. Fill out, there's a top section and then there's a small bottom section that you need to fill out. Be sure to fill out the bottom section because I've noted um, when people would, would wait in line for 25 minutes and they would show up to the customs line if they didn't fill it out, they'd have to like step to the side and finish it before they could like get back to the custom line. So just be sure to fill out everything on the piece of paper and you'll be easily done through customs. But on the second time that we visited Cancun, we arrived on a Tuesday and the line was completely empty. I think there was probably like five people ahead of us. It took like two minutes. So that's just the differences of arri from arriving on a weekend or weekday. Not that it'll change your travel plans, whatever day that you can travel, obviously travel that day, but just something to keep in mind, some extra time when you get off the plane. And then after customs is where you'll pick up your bags if you check the bag, and then you will head out and just be prepared for like 10 people coming up to you to sell you like a, a timeshare or something. Just exit out the door and then that's where I feel like it gets really overwhelming. You have people, you have taxi drivers wanting to offer you a ride, you have everyone else just trying to like get your attention and this is where i think my first tip is to prearrange your travel transportation from the airport to your hotel um most hotels offer a hotel shuttle so just definitely just get in contact with the hotel that you're staying at for a hotel shuttle it'll be less expensive than a private transfer um you could also opt for a private transfer as well and they'll have your name on a little stick but it is really overwhelming if you don't have any travel rides planned um the taxis will probably charge you a bit more obviously i think just having your ride ready to go a really smart idea you won't feel too overwhelmed when you enter mexico let's talk about the hotel that you are staying at so most of the hotels are located on the hotel zone um, along the main strip of Cancun. There are also some hotels located on the northern part of the hotel zone. Honestly, anywhere you stay in Cancun, you're gonna have pretty much the same experience. Like it's not too different from the north part of the hotel zone to the south of the hotel zone. So that doesn't really play into consideration where you should stay. But keep in mind, the lower that you stay on the hotel zone, the closer you are to the airport. So generally the ride from the airport to the hotel zone is like 15 minutes. Um, it could be like 25 minutes if you're staying at the northern part of the hotel zone. But other than that, it's not too far from the airport. And the location really isn't a consideration factor for where you're going to stay. 
two types of hotels in Cancun. You could do an all-inclusive or a non-all-inclusive. So I'm gonna get into the pros and cons of each. I do wanna say, Cancun is known for like parties and like group gatherings. You can totally find your vibe in Cancun. A lot of the hotels have its own feel. There are some hotels that are just more calming and relaxing. Other hotels are more for a party. If you're going to celebrate like a bachelorette party or bachelor party, you probably want to go to a more upbeat hotel with like where the pool plays music and it's more of like a fun energy. But if you want a more relaxing, chill vibe, you can also find a hotel that is perfect for you. So definitely don't be <laughs> discouraged if you don't want to be a party scene. You can find a chill, relaxing hotel. Let's talk about the differences between booking an all-inclusive hotel or a non-all-inclusive hotel. So I stayed at both, I have the full experience. Some things that I liked about the all-inclusive hotel was that you don't have to worry about money on your trip, like everything is already paid for with your room rates. So you don't have to worry about like signing a bill, you don't have to look at pricing, um, you could just like order whatever you would like and it's there. And then some resorts also offer even like top shelf liquors. I stayed at the Palace Resorts and they all serve top shelf liquor. Also with all inclusive hotels, there are, I feel like there's more activities that you can do. It's not like the non all inclusive don't have activities, but they're also an extra charge. But with an all inclusive, there's usually like pool activities. Um, a lot of fitness activities, just things that you can do around the resort that's included in your pricing. And then for the all-inclusive, I thought it would be more of like a rowdy crowd, but the hotels that I stayed at, LeBlanc and Sun Palace, wasn't that rowdy. It was more of like a relaxing all-inclusive vibe. If you want more of like a fun, upbeat all-inclusive, Hard Rock Hotel is super fun and lively. I walked by on the beach and it was like fun music pumping at the pool at the beach, it was just like an upbeat energy if that is something that you're looking into. Not every all-inclusive is gonna be a crazy crowd, so just keep that in mind. And, and then in general, the all-inclusive just felt like a super easy vacation. You don't, have to, you don't have to really worry about anything at an all-inclusive because everything is included. If you want, you know, a mimosa in the morning, you could just have one. And it's just, everything is just ready for you to enjoy which i kind of like that laid back experience if and if you have stayed in cancun let me know in the comments down below if you if you prefer a all-inclusive or a non-all-inclusive resort i would love to hear your opinion on this i'm kind of torn between the two because they, they have pros and cons um also price all-inclusive will be a bit more expensive that's just something to keep in mind so then some benefits of visiting a non all-inclusive resort, so you pay for all your food and beverage and all your activities, is that it wasn't as crowded, in my opinion, as the all-inclusive resorts. I feel like the all-inclusive is a more popular choice, so the non-all-inclusive resorts, I feel like they're not as rowdy. It's just kind of more of a relaxed vibe. The pricing of the rooms will be less expensive because you are gonna be paying for the food on top of everything else. So your room rate is gonna be less, but your food and beverage will be obviously on top of everything. I calculated my food budget for one day at the Marriott and for two people doing like a full on breakfast, breakfast buffet and a plate, um, lunch with drinks and dinner with a lot of drinks, it came out to be $250 for one day for two people. And that's because we like to drink alcohol. If you aren't a big drinker, staying at an all-inclusive may not be the best choice for you just because you are paying a premium to stay there. And if you're not gonna indulge in the beverages, it may not be as best rate for your money. It totally just depends, but that is something to keep in mind. I personally like to drink a lot on vacation. So I think for me, staying at an all-inclusive would make more sense for me but that's just a little tip. Another thing about staying at a non-all-inclusive hotel is that because you're paying for the food, you're more likely to explore outside of your hotel, which could be a good or bad thing. I think it's a great thing. Um, it's always fun to like venture out of the hotel and yes, it's safe. I'll get more into safety in a moment, but it is kind of cool to see other things outside of your hotel, other restaurants. There's other restaurants located on the hotel zone on the bay side, which is actually really perfect for a sunset. And if you're paying for your food at an all-inclusive, 
you probably won't want to leave your resort because you're obviously paying for all of your meals. When I was staying at the all-inclusive resorts, I didn't leave the hotel once, which is totally fine. The food was good. If you want to explore outside of the hotel, check out different bars and restaurants, staying at an all-inclusive may be a better choice for you. And then a negative of an all-inclusive is that because your food and beverage are included, um, you want to like your food and beverage. If the food isn't good, you may not have a great experience. Um, because you are basically staying at the resort for all your food, the food may get repetitive if you're staying for a longer period of time. So you may like want to try something new. If you're staying for a long period of time, most of the resorts have like five restaurants on property. So if you're staying for more than five nights, that might be an issue, but that's something to keep in mind. And obviously because you're paying for the food up front, hopefully you actually enjoy the food. So food quality is really important when you're booking an all-inclusive. The palace resorts, the resorts that I stayed at, is actually really delicious. So the food quality wasn't an issue for where I was staying but it wasn't like the cheapest all-inclusive in Cancun. Staying at an all-inclusive, it kind of promotes overindulgence because you probably want to get most out of your money. You want to like make drink more or just like eat more. There's like a, there's always like a beautiful dessert option, like all time. If you don't want to overeat, it kind of promotes just like, hey, let's grab a scoop of ice cream. Let's grab another taco. Let's get another plate at the buffet. You kind of like get into like overconsumption, but not a negative. It's just something to keep in mind when you're staying at an all-inclusive. Okay, so I did leave the hotel to go out to dinner and leaving the hotel is safe. Obviously just keep in mind your surroundings, but I didn't feel unsafe once. I actually walked on the hotel zone to go to McDonald's and then I took a cab one night to go out to eat and it wasn't like a weird experience at all didn't feel sketchy so it is safe to venture out of your hotel um, in the hotel zone at, at night as well and then if you do plan on leaving the hotel via taxi just like every hotel will have a taxi stand so if you need one you can just walk outside and they'll get you a cab and I always ask if how much should this cost and then kind of communicate with the driver so everything is like on the same page. Otherwise, you don't want to get into a cab and they charge you more money than what. So I always like to negotiate the price before getting into a cab just to be on the safe side. And then for the cab, I, I paid in pesos. I'm not sure if they take credit card, but just to be on the safe side, I would definitely take out some pesos. Most hotels have ATMs. There is a bit of an ATM charge. When you are in Mexico, you can pay for things in US dollars and pesos. If you do want change back and you pay in USD, you will get pesos in change. I only got pesos for the cab ride. Um, I didn't really use pesos while I was there. I was tipping in US dollars because I didn't go to the ATM, but they accept both pesos and US dollars. So for the taxi price to go to the hotel, to the restaurant was about like 10 US dollars. And if you go from your hotel to anywhere in the hotel zone, I think it would range about the same 10 to $15 per ride. Also a public bus that you could take. I would do this during the day, perhaps if you want to go along the hotel zone, I think it's like one or two US dollars per person. It's a really affordable way to get around the hotel zone. One US dollar is 20 pesos. And because you are in the hotel zone, don't expect things to be like really cheap. In fact, everything is in American pricing. Even the food, if you're staying at not all inclusive. So the drinks were about $12. A big, big bottle of water was $5. It's not necessarily cheaper in the hotel zone. Um, you're gonna be paying American pricing for everything. You can pay in USD pesos or you could use a card if you go to the convenience store. So the weather in Cancun is really hot and humid so be sure to bring some sunscreen. I like to kind of just lay out with no umbrella and I did that the first day and I got super burnt. Not the smartest choice so definitely put on sunscreen and hang out under umbrella because the sun is super powerful down there. The sand is like super soft. It's like the most amazing water. And then because Cancun has a strong current, you'll see on the beach they have different flags. Green flag is okay for swimming. Yellow is like caution. And then red is like, don't swim. And then there's a black flag that's like really like don't swim. But while we were there the whole time it was all red flags. So that means like the current is really strong. So everyone was kind of swimming near the shore. 
Um, it's just not a smart idea to go all the way out because it's it could be dangerous potentially but the waves while we were there were super kind of rough they weren't like a calm bay but the last day that we were leaving it was like the only like calm day and it, the water looks beautiful to swim in so just keep out keep an eye out for the flags if you aren't a strong swimmer or you don't want to like get in the water this is like probably my favorite tip on the list and that is to bring a thermal I have this one. I wouldn't bring this, but you can bring like the shorter ones with a wider rim. I was seeing people put in their drinks from their from their waiters, bartenders, whatever, into the thermal so it kept cold in the hot Cancun sun. I thought that was genius because once you get a cold drink, it will melt very quickly. So if you want to enjoy your beverages, bring a thermal to keep everything cold so you can enjoy your beverages. Something that I like to do is walk along the beach in Cancun. It's kind of fun to see all of the different hotels on the water. And it may look kind of small, but it's a really long strip. So I could only make it down like five resorts and then I would walk back, but it's totally safe um, during the day. It's everyone's outside. You can kind of get a different vibe of all of the hotels, which is also a fun way to see where you could stay next in Cancun or just to see what the vibe is like at different hotels. If you're traveling from the US, the outlets in Cancun, they are American compatible. They are the same plugs that we use for our electronics. And then I think some hotels even have American and European plugs. If you're from Europe, I would definitely call. But if you are from America, don't worry about any of your electronics. Everything will work in the Cancun hotels perfectly fine. Sun rises directly in front of the water every morning and then it sets in the back. So um, the beach will lose shade. Depending on how tall your hotel is, some parts of the beach will lose shade first. So when you're picking out your beach chair, something to keep in mind if you wanna plan to stay out all day is that the sun rises from the water and then it sets back by like the lagoon in Cancun. If you wanna watch the sunset, um, a great way to do it is to go to a restaurant outside of your hotel zone if you're not staying at an all-inclusive um, to watch the sunset on the bay. It's a really fun experience. I also did a Q&A on my Instagram. Okay, so someone asked, did you go to Isla Mujeres? No, I did not go. I really wanted to visit and it's actually a super easy day trip from your resort. Um, the ferry to Isla Mujeres is on the northern part of the hotel zone. So if you stay around there, it'll be really easy to get to. If you're on the southern part, you can take it's like a dollar or two dollars all the way up to the ferry port. And then the ferry to Isla Mujeres, I think it's like $10 a person. Not 100% sure on that, but beautiful. So definitely keep that in mind. There's also plenty other day trips and activities that you can do in Cancun. There's like a catamaran tour in Isla Mujeres. Um, you could do like a boating thing on the bay. So I'll leave a few options in the description box as well. Did you experience any problems not speaking Spanish? No, English was widely spoken, so it wasn't an issue at all. Obviously I always recommend like learning like, hello, thank you, goodbye just to be polite, but really you will not have a problem not speaking any Spanish. Did you have to get a COVID test to get back to the US? And that is a yes currently. Anyone who is out of the country and wants to come back to the US, you do need to get a COVID test. And the amazing thing about the hotels in Cancun is that they offer the testing free. They offer rapid tests for free. What you do is when you arrive, they'll probably even talk to you about it to make an appointment. It is a super quick process. They give you the results in 30 minutes via email. And it's kind of just like a new setup that has happened. And you will not have an issue finding a test in Cancun. Did you do any excursions or eat outside the resort? Excursions, no. <laughs> but I did eat outside of the resort and it, I went to Elios, which is like a new restaurant in Cancun. They just opened this year and it is like the most gorgeous Greek restaurant. It was a vibe. Like if you like vibey things, definitely check out Elios. Um, the decor was stunning and they're open for lunch and dinner. Little did I know at night there's a full on show and later at night it becomes kind of like a nightclub. It's popping. It was very busy. It was very cute. And then we also watched the sunset from Elio, so it was a really cool moment 
definitely if you want to visit make a reservation as they are like completely booked especially on the weekends but it was a really fun night is the water warm enough to the water's colder in the morning but during the day it warms up especially because it's so hot in cancun you're definitely going to want to get in the water and like cool off so the water is warm enough definitely that's all the questions that i have if i missed anything if you have a question that i didn't cover please leave a comment down below i'll do my best to answer your questions um cancun is always a fun time i'm missing it so much because the weather right now in new york is just freezing so a trip to cancun is always a fun idea i also have my vlogs on cancun in the description box as well so with that hope you guys have an amazing day if you're going to cancun let me know when you're going. I'm so excited for you. And I hope you enjoy your trip. So fun and fabulous. And let me know what you do in the comments down below. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.